Hello. Today's talk is all about becoming one in a billion, how to cut through the noise and stand out on LinkedIn. Now, lots of people say life is short. And I always think to myself, name one thing that you can do which is longer. Now, I appreciate that's kind of being quite facetious about it, but taking it on face value. But actually, this phrase is very much uh, about a much bigger picture. I live in the beautiful city in Co of Coventry in the centre of England, home to Lady Godiva. It's obviously uh, part of England, which is part of the UK, which is ultimately part of the planet that we live on. But this is a it's all about a much bigger picture. We are... Uh, floating through space. We are part of the solar system. There's lots of planets orbiting the sun. We're surrounded by billions of stars. Um, and then we have, well, the universes and galaxies and Milky Ways and all this other kind of stuff, basically stuff that I don't really understand. And ultimately, we're, you know, we're a very small part of a massive thing. And obviously we wake up in the morning and we kind of, we rub our eyes and we stretch our arms and we open the curtains and we think to ourselves, what are we going to post on LinkedIn today, right? No, just me? Okay, cool. Um, and generally, so LinkedIn is the world's biggest uh, business professional platform. There are now a billion people using LinkedIn. And obviously, we're surrounded by billions of stars and billions of people where we think, you know, we watch others and we think, how do we stand out above everybody else? Now, one of the, I won't bore you with all the stats, but basically LinkedIn started in 2002 uh, incremental growth uh, in, in 2016, Microsoft bought it and thought, right, let's, you know, we're going to make something of this platform. But the full transition was really in 2020 when the pandemic hit. That's when people had to go home and start scrolling their phones and not be able to go into the office, etc. We still wanted to have conversations with our fellow business professionals. And during the pandemic, that's when LinkedIn fully transitioned from a place where you just put CVs or, you know, get, want to get a job, etc., to what it is today, a proper social media platform where we have two-way conversations with the people around us. And like I said, as of today, we have 1 billion members on LinkedIn. Now, today's talk is specifically focused on the, th the things that we can do to make sure that we stand out and ultimately rise above everyone around us. So my name is Gus, Gus Bandel. I'm a marketer of many, many years. Um, I am a marketing strategist. I'm a social media specialist. I've worked for some of the world's largest companies. I've got loads of letters after my name. Uh, I've been running my own digital marketing agency since 2017. And I'm the UK's number one LinkedIn trainer, according to my mom. Now, <laughs> The digital marketing ecosystem, I won't kind of dwell on this too far, but basically we want our customers to find us. That's ultimately the, the point. And obviously we want to convert those people that find us, those potential uh, customers into actual customers, into paying customers. They come in, they find us on Google. They might visit our website, read our blog. Um, they, may have, they might be word of mouth referrals from partners, stakeholders, clients, friends, family, whatever it may be. Then they find us on social media, organic social media, or they might get served our ads if we do paid social. Then obviously we want to try and capture those people into our email marketing list so we can email them on a regular basis. And then obviously take those conversations offline to turn those people into clients. Um, the organic bit is what we're going to concentrate on today. So essentially the free stuff that we can do on LinkedIn that makes us stand out and makes us stand out above, above and beyond everybody else around us. Okay, so ultimately we want to be the star. Like I said earlier, LinkedIn became the digital water cooler. It's the place where people, um, particularly in the pandemic, where people were having conversations. They wanted to talk to one another and speak to one another and uh, beyond the, the, the typical office chat of this is what I'm doing for a living or this is what I'm doing today. They wanted to know, what did you watch on TV last night? What did you eat last night? Or have you been networking recently? Who have you met recently, et cetera? LinkedIn has become the place where we have conversations and ultimately people buy from people. We have to use LinkedIn to get people to know us, like us, and trust us. And as we all know, once we once people trust us, they hand over their cash, right? And that's kind of the point. We want to get we want to convert people into knowing us, liking us, and trusting us enough to use us in, in business. I imagine 95% of the people who have booked on to the Rise Above Summit are fully aware of who your ideal client is. I'm sure you know exactly who your ideal client is their age, their demographic, their socioeconomic status, um, their gender, their location, what they're into, what car they drive, what pets they have, how do they have children, et cetera. And ultimately what teams they have, what, what resources they have and so on and so forth. Now with LinkedIn, 
It's all about being the lighthouse. It's basically standing in one place and attracting these people to come to you. One of the biggest focuses of my work is helping businesses to get inbound leads. It's all very well trying to be everywhere and trying to be on all social media uh, platforms and the digital marketing ecosystem, as I described earlier. It's basically trying to be everywhere and trying to be on Google and having websites and writing blogs and doing email marketing and paid social and the organic social and taking people for coffees and all that kind of stuff and writing proposals and et cetera. By the time you've done all that, you've forgot where your day job is, right? So LinkedIn is very is the easiest place as the, the world's number one business platform to stand in one place and attract those inbound leads. But obviously you have to know who your ideal clients are and that's the most important thing. So I have a very, uh, it may look like an easy four stage strategy for LinkedIn, but ultimately, uh, what we have to do is optimize our profile, find ideal clients, create great content and do plenty of outbound engagement in terms of having two way conversations. Social media, but LinkedIn specifically relies on having two way conversations It is not a place to broadcast. Those two way conversations are where people get to know us, like us and trust us. And as I said earlier, people buy from people. And so ultimately, it's having those conversations. So let's start with optimizing your profile. And I know you're gonna like looking at this, you're gonna think is this guy really teaching us how to write headlines? We all know this, but actually, hopefully I teach some of you something some somewhere along the lines today, right? So the first thing is I have the famous Gus Bandau LinkedIn headline template trademark. Uh, well, that's a lie, it's not trademark, but let's pretend it is, right? So the famous Gus Bandau LinkedIn headline template is what, who, how, why. What do I do for a living? Who do I do it for? How do I do it? Why should uh, why should you work with me? So for example, what do I do for a living? I'm the UK's number one LinkedIn trainer. Who do I do it for? Business owners, senior executives and teams. How do I do it? Social media or marketing strategy. Why should you work with me? I amplify your visibility and explode your inbound leads. Now, you have 220 characters to tell the world what you do. As you can see there, I've added a little joke on the end plus a little social proof, but generally, the LinkedIn, the famous Gus Bandel LinkedIn headline template is what, who, how, why. The bit that I want to teach you is the first 50 to 60 characters or so are the most important. They're the bits that people will see about you straight away. When you engage, when you comment, when you speak to others, when people find you, um, when they look at your profile, etc. It's the first bit that they will see. So you will see other people suggesting headlines like, oh, it should start with something like, helping time poor business owners with um, or whatever. Nobody cares about the end of that sentence. You haven't told them exactly what you do. Now, for those of you old enough to remember the Ron Seal marketing strategy, it's very much, you know, it does exactly what it says on the tin. The first 50 to 60 characters of your headline, so the first, you know, seven or eight words, six or seven words, there or thereabouts, should tell the world exactly what you do for a living. Mine's very clear, the UK's number one LinkedIn trainer. Or it could be um, personal trainer for men under 35, uh, nutritionist for uh, menopausal women, whatever it may be, it, it, business coach for uh, the over 50s or over 50 business owners, or et cetera. The first part of your headline should tell the world exactly what you do for a living. And then the rest of the headline is, who do I do it for? How do I do it? Why should you work with me? Okay. Oh, and I should say, you wanna remember this four elements later when I talk about the, the about section in a moment. Now, we have a featured section. The featured section is one of the most underutilized sections on uh, LinkedIn in terms of how to use it right. There's lots of people that have stuff in their featured section. They just add any old rubbish in there. Oh, I've written a blog, I've written an article. Great, somebody should read it. Oh, here's a post about the lasagna I made last night. Great, I'll stick it in my featured section. Nobody cares, boring stuff. Now, I always say the first three uh, elements of your featured section should be self, sell, shout. So the self, so here's a little post about me. This is what I do. This is who I am. I support Liverpool FC. I love Don Donna Kebabs. I live in Coventry, you know, that kind of stuff. But also I've got 25 years of marketing experience, got loads of letters after my name, blah, blah, blah. That's the introduction, okay? I wrote a post about it, added a selfie, well, a, a photograph of me and published it and stuck it in my featured section. That's the self. The sell is, this is how you work with me. This is what I do. This is how much it costs. This is how much it costs to work with me. This is what you get from working with me, etc. The second element should be, what are you selling? What is the stuff that you're promoting? And then the third one is social proof, shouting about yourself. So for me, it's a testimonial. Like here's a, It could be a testimonial, a recommendation, um, a video of somebody else saying something nice about you, or it could be a case study, etc. whatever it may be. Self, sell, shout. 
these are the three elements. This is your best foot forward. It becomes like a mini website where people learn all about you. They learn about what you sell and they learn about other people saying nice things about you. Okay. Then we have your about section. Now, as you can see, the first four lines are the ones that are visible. They should entice and excite your potential audience to click see more. They should want, they would, should want to click see more. I can guarantee at least 90% of the people watching this now, on the, in the audience now, your about section will say something along the lines of, I have this education and I've had this and I got this and I got this experience and aren't I great, et cetera. Nobody cares. They don't care about your education or what companies you've worked for, et cetera. Talk to your ideal audience. The first four lines should talk to your ideal audience. Mine's very clear. You are a business owner. Uh, you manage a team. You can't make LinkedIn work. You don't have a marketing strategy. This is where I come in. And that hopefully, if people think, yes, I am a business owner, or yes, I do manage a team. And yes, we are all rubbish at marketing and we are all rubbish at LinkedIn. I need to speak to this guy. They click see more. Then it becomes war and peace. And you know, like, like as in you can write up to 3000 characters from them. Now, earlier I talked about the famous Gus Bandau LinkedIn headline template, what, who, how, why. The rest of your about section should be what, who, how, why. What do I do for a living? How do I do it? Um, uh, what do I do where, and why should you work with me? And the third element is make sure you add a call to action. So the first element is make sure that the top four lines talk to your ideal audience. The second element is make it an ex extension of your headline to tell the world exactly what you do. And then the third element is make sure there's a call to action. At the end of your about section, there should be a call to action. Join my members, memberships, uh, send me an email, here's my website address, you know, et cetera, whatever it may be. Make sure you've got a call to action at the end of your about section. When we go down to your experience section, first things first, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs, but everybody who's on LinkedIn should be connected to a company page. If you run a business, it should be your company page. If you're an employee, it should be your boss's company page. There should be a company page connected to your personal profile simply because your ideal clients will do their due diligence. They'll read your headline, they'll read your about section, they'll read your content, and then they'll go to your company and think, I wanna know what company this person works for. They'll go there, they'll read your company page, they'll click on the blue button that takes them to your website, they'll get to know you, like you, and trust you, but they'll follow the path of the correct kind of the, the digital marketing ecosystem, right? If you don't have a company page, it falls down. The loop goes back where people, essentially, they come back to you. Um, so if you don't have a company page, they click on what I call the blue and gray skyscrapers of death. It's like the bits that um, it doesn't take them anywhere. And when they click on that, they end up in a loop of coming back to your profile. And when they come back to your profile, LinkedIn shows them other people as well. And then all of a sudden, people think, oh, that person over there has got an interesting name. They'll click on it, and then they've gone, and then they'll never, never come back to you. So don't get people stuck in a loop. Make sure they follow the digital marketing ecosystem. Have a personal profile connected to a company page. Connect that company page to a website. So it has to follow, okay? Creator mode. <clears throat> One of the things, just as we were coming out of the pandemic, LinkedIn decided that we should all have creator mode or they're going to give us the option of creator mode. Essentially, tools, creation tools. Like, so for example, we can go live on LinkedIn, we can set up audio events, we can send out newsletters, or we can indeed add a, we can embed a follow link onto our website. But basically the top three there, LinkedIn live, audio events and newsletters are the most important. If you are not going to do any of those, if you're not gonna go live on LinkedIn or host audio events or send out newsletters, probably don't need to switch on creator mode. A few other things that Creator Mode does is it's, um, it gives you a link in bio, so you can have a link at the top of your profile card where you know you can send people to your website or your booking page or whatever. Um, the the one thing I don't like is it changes your connect button to a follow button. So if you visit somebody's profile, there's a blue button and it says connect to that but that person. If you switch on Creator Mode, it switches to a follow button, which means they can follow you. But you, so they see all of your content, but you don't see any of theirs. And I'm not really a big fan of that. I prefer LinkedIn to be a two-way conversation. However, I've put TBC there because LinkedIn recently announced that actually they're gonna swap that. So they're gonna, um, you have the option of changing the follow button to a connect button if you choose to, which is great. So in that case, then it, you know, the one negative thing of create mode is actually being removed. Um, 
And the other thing creator mode does is if you switch it on, it swaps your featured section with your about section. If you have creator mode off, your about section comes first. If you have creator mode on, your featured section comes first. That particular day, the LinkedIn developers must have had way too much time on their hands because I don't really I like I don't see the point of that change. But ultimately, if you switch creator mode on, it moves your mini website, the uh, self sell shout, it moves it up your profile. Okay. <laughs> Keywords. This image always makes me laugh. I just, I just, it shouldn't. I've seen this presentation a million times. Now, while I was practicing, obviously. Um, you put keywords all over your profile, okay? Your content, your headline, your experience. So in your content that you create, in your headline at the top, you know, the four, you know, the famous Gus Bandau LinkedIn headline template, in your experience section, so where your kind of your current uh, company is, uh, your featured section, so your mini website, the skills that sit at the bottom of your profile, the hashtags that you use in your content, your about section, which is an extension of your headline, and then testimonials. When people give you testimonials, hopefully they use keywords in those testimonials. The reason for the image is if you look at the first letters of all, you know, it's the acronym chef's hat. Okay. Um, and when I first created this, uh, this presentation, I accidentally put the space between the F and the S. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, so if you're remembering this chef's hat, that's probably the best way to remember it. Um, content, headline, experience, featured skills, hashtags about testimonials. These are the places where you put your keywords about what you do. So my keywords are social media, digital marketing, LinkedIn, etc. Make sure that your keywords, uh, make sure your profile is littered with keywords. Not only does it help search, but LinkedIn nowadays is Googleable. If people Google cer certain terms, they'll see your social media profiles, including your LinkedIn profile, okay? So find ideal clients. Now, obviously we've talked about optimizing your profile. The whole point is we want to get inbound leads. So our profile has to say all the right things and you'll be surprised how many people don't have a profile that says the right things. They just, you know, it's just, it's just kind of there because they just churn out content, but they forget what it says in their headline or their about section, et cetera. So that's the first bit. Cover your profile with keywords, make sure it all says the right things. When you reach out to your ideal clients and you should know exactly who your ideal clients are, age, demographic, socioeconomic status, um, gender, uh, what car they drive, what dog they have, what pets they have, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you should know exactly who your ideal clients are because they're the people you're creating content for and they're the people that you're searching for. Now, LinkedIn, I'll put my name on this quote because this is my quote and this is like, just don't, you know, it's I'm so self-involved and arrogant that I, I want you to remember, I said this. Everywhere else, you can you you are followed. You have to tell people, "I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. Come and see me over there." <laughs> LinkedIn is the only place where you get to curate your own audience. So you think about your ideal clients. So let's say my ideal clients are accountants in the West Midlands or in Coventry or whatever, chartered accountants in Coventry. I can search for chartered accountant Coventry or bring me up a whole list of chartered accountants in Coventry and I can systematically connect to them. It's the only place I curate my own audience. I then tell the people that I connect, that I choose to connect to why I want to connect with them. Nine times out of 10, they will accept my connection request. All of a sudden, I start curating the perfect audience of people, quite frankly, that should be giving me money at some point. So don't forget, LinkedIn is the only place where you get to curate your own audience. You do the outreach, you search for your ideal clients, you go out and connect to them. Now, I use what is called a Boolean search. I'm not going to bore you to death with this. Just, just head over to Google or whatever search engine you use. Um, <clears throat> but generally, it's going to be Google, right? Um, and just type in Boolean's LinkedIn. It will bring up the uh, the help page from the LinkedIn website, which is or talks all about Booleans. Essentially, it's about creating precise search terms. So not like generic rubbish, like business owner, United Kingdom kind of thing. It's 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 much more honed than that. So uh, and it talks about adding inverted commas, and you can use words in the middle, like you know, um, program manager, not assistant, or something like that kind of thing. And it's basically it, it searches particular things. Um, it's really clever. It's brilliant. Uh, and, and we can do it on the free LinkedIn thing. So the search box at LinkedIn, we can do Boolean search to find exactly the people that we want to be talking to. Okay. But I, like I said, won't bore you to death. Just head over to Google after this presentation um, and just type in Boolean's LinkedIn. 
when I reach out to people, I always send them DMs every single time. 100% of the time, you should send a connection note, which basically said, I would like to connect with you because of X, Y, Z. For example, I love your last piece of content, or I really want to read your content, or I see we have mutual connections, or we're both based in Coventry, whatever it may be. Don't make it too inane. Obviously, it has to be something, there has to be some sort of reason of why you would want to connect to somebody, as opposed to, I sell this service. Like, I'm a personal trainer. I've noticed you're fat. Let's connect. Don't do that. Okay? Don't sell to people, um, or at least don't be rude to people. Make it about them. Make it something, you know, say something nice. Make sure it's personable. Be yourself and don't sell. Slight caveat here. In the last few weeks, LinkedIn have announced that you can only send 10 personalized invites a month on the free account. The ways around this, so what I suggest is you either send a blank invite and then follow it up with a message um, if and when they accept. But the better way to do it is I normally comment on content. So I normally go to their content and say, oh, I love this post. I'm going to send you a connection request. And therefore, I don't need to add a note with the connection request because then hopefully they've already seen the, the, you know, the, the comment that I've written. But then having said that, you don't have to connect 100 people, hundreds of people per month. I normally recommend roughly around five to 10 per week. But if I, as I suggest, always add a connection request, like a note, make sure that you somehow get a message to that person that says, this is why I want to connect with you. And the last note there, the fourth element there, whenever anybody accepts my connection request, and because I've said something about them and like I've sent them a, um, a personalized note, more often than not, they will accept. When they accept, I send a note of thanks. Thank you for connecting. I look forward to keeping in touch and just leave it at that because I let my content do the talking, which I'll talk about in a moment. When we talk about growing your network, do not forget your existing network. Most marketers and particularly LinkedIn experts are hell bent on getting a massive audience. They're just after the numbers. I would like 30,000 connections. I want 50,000 followers, et cetera. And for the most part, it's pointless. It's better to have a small, perfectly curated audience of people that exactly are interested in what you have to say so you can sell to them. If you have 50,000 followers, and unless you're you know, Bill Gates or Richard Branson, unless you have 50,000 followers and all 50,000 say they want to work with you, if they do, you're going to be absolutely screwed, right? So basically, don't forget your existing network. A, a small, perfectly curated audience of people that are interested in you. So don't ever forget the people that you're already connected to. So we optimize our profile. We make it look great. We send out connection requests and curate the perfect audience of people that we want to speak to. We say, thanks for connecting. We look forward to keeping in touch. I look forward to keeping in touch. And then you create content that they want to read. The most basic of content foundation is FAST. The acronym FAST. Find the pain, agitate the pain, deliver the solution, share testimonials, you know, back it up, case studies, testimonials, recommendations, whatever it may be. So when you create content, this is the most, this is the easiest way to get people to buy from you. More often than not, most people on LinkedIn go straight for the solution. Here's the solution that I'm delivering. I'm a social media trainer. I'm a LinkedIn specialist. I, you know, I, I'm a business coach. I'm a nutritionist, whatever it may be. They go straight for the solution. They haven't found the pain points of their ideal clients. If you've ever seen any of my presentations before, I always use the terrible analogy of a mattress salesman. So the mattress salesman um, finds the pain. He basically says, uh, so you're having trouble sleeping at night. That's the pain. Then they agitate the pain by saying, well, if you're having trouble sleeping at night, then that probably means that you've got bags under your eyes, you've got a bad back, you've got a bad neck, you're really lethargic, you're struggling at work, you're struggling to concentrate, um, your wife hates you, your dog's going to leave you, your house is going to re be repossessed, you know, et cetera. Really agitate the pain. And then they deliver the solution by saying, you should buy our mattress. Now, at that point, if they found the pain and agitated the pain, by the time they deliver the solution, you're like, man... I really need this mattress. I've got to buy this mattress. And then they share testimonies. You know, 5,000 people have bought this mattress or look at all, look at all our five-star reviews on Trustpilot or whatever it may be. Don't go straight for the solution. Most people just say, this is what I do for a living. You should buy my stuff. And people switch off. So if we go right to the back to, uh, to the beginning, the, link, the famous Gus Bandau LinkedIn headline template, what, who, how, why? What do we do? Who do we do it for? How do we do it? Why should you work with me? Find their pains. Think about your ideal clients. 
find their pain points. Why should they come to you? Why would they go to your competitors? Why would they go to somebody else? Where, where, where is the, what is the solution that you're providing? But if you work backwards, what is it? So for example, Starbucks don't sell coffee. They sell a, a thirst solution. That's a terrible analogy, but you know what I mean. They're not they're not focused on you know the coffee itself. They you know they talk about fair trade. They talk about you know particular locations. They talk about ease. They talk about you know the the speed and and all that kind of stuff. Or they talk about their personality, like oh we'll write your name on the side of a cup. Not that they ever get my name right, but that's a different story. Um, what are the pain points of your ideal clients? Agitate those pains. What happens if those pain points aren't um, alleviated? How can you alleviate them and then back it up? Share testimonials. So basic content foundations for LinkedIn, create content that is fast. Find the pain, agitate the pain, deliver a solution, share testimonials. Oh yeah, but uh, I always forget I get this slide. Um, the Gus Bandel, Daniel Craig content strategy. 70% of my content is very personable. It's very like, um, I've been networking today or I made a lasagna last night or I saw this person or I went network, uh, you know, I, I went for a coffee with this person or I bought brand new orange trainers or somebody has sent me some orange chocolate. Um, but then 30% of my content is basically the proper, this is what I sell, this is how much it costs, you know, et cetera. So 70% of my content, so basically more or less, two thirds of my content is Daniel Craig dancing in a Belvedere vodka advert. 30% of my content is Daniel Craig in a suit, ready for work, okay? So I have the personality element, then I have the work element. If your content is 100% either way, if you only create jovial content, nobody knows what you do. If you only talk about what you do, people don't understand what makes you tick, and then you just look like everybody else. So to stand out, to become one in a billion on LinkedIn and to, and to stand out, you have to share what makes you unique. This is what makes me tick. I love networking. I love orange chocolate. I love orange trainers. I love speaking to people. I love speaking gigs. I do this. I do that. I eat this food. I see these people, etc. And But th don't forget the selling. This is what I do for a living. This is how much it costs. This is how you can work with me. These are your pain points. This is what I do to provide a solution to those pain points by my stuff. Yeah. Now, and finally, um, almost finally, outbound engagement. Make sure you have plenty of two-way conversations. My favorite way is to, if you look at somebody's profile and you connect to them, just under their banner, there's a little bell symbol. Click on that bell symbol. Every time they post pieces of content, you will get a notification. What I do is I pick 20 or 30 ideal clients. I click on their bell. And every time they, they post something, I get a notification. I go and engage with it. For want of a better phrase, I stay in their face, basically, until they buy, die, or tell me to go away right i think that's the phrase um so click the bell and engage with people it's a really efficient strategy for uh so you don't have to scroll the feed all day every day you just click the bells of those ideal clients and then engage with those ideal clients to the point where when they are ready to buy they think man this guy's always in my face i should give him some money so go and engage click the bells of your ideal clients or the content that you enjoy reading obviously i have a very arbitrary figure of 10 to 1 for every post that I create, I engage with 10 others. Um, and again, this is an arbitrary, it could be anything. It could be 20, it could be 30, it could be one. It's entirely up to you. But generally, don't forget to engage with others. LinkedIn is not a broadcast channel. Don't just post a piece of content and hope that somebody will see it. The way they're going to see it is if you do plenty of outbound engagement and warm up the algorithm, as some people would say. So do plenty of outbound engagement to talk to others, like, comment, speak to others, send DMs, whatever it may be. OK. <clears throat> now, LinkedIn being one in a billion is one thing. But what you want to do is make sure that you are surrounded by brand ambassadors and brand advocates. If you're creating the right content and curating the perfect audience, ultimately, if that audience doesn't want to buy from you, they will recommend you to others. It's trust transfer. So when one person says, oh, I'm looking for the UK's number one LinkedIn trainer, hopefully people in my network will say, hey, you should speak to Gus. And it's the trust transfer of, so this person trusts me, that person doesn't know me, but this per and this person is transferring the trust to the person that doesn't know me, okay? So it's about curating the perfect audience of people that if they're not going to buy from us, they share our content with others. And hence, it grows our personal brand, it grows our, uh, it, it reinforces who we are and what we do, okay? So 
make it work. Invest in training. So invest in your uh, like LinkedIn training, whether yeah, if you have a team or something for yourself, make sure you invest in training so you understand how LinkedIn works. Hopefully today will give you that grounding and you, you, it gives you everything you need. Um, build it into your working day, 10 minutes in the morning or the half an hour every Friday or whatever it may be. Build LinkedIn into your working day to go and engage, to go and speak to people, et cetera. And then add it into your infrastructure, your email signatures, put it on your website, put it on your business cards, et cetera. If you want to be the lighthouse, you have to tell people where that lighthouse is. If your lighthouse is LinkedIn, you have to tell people, come and see me on LinkedIn, okay? Having the perfect LinkedIn profile is the path of least resistance. It's where you get clients, it's where you um, get business partners and stakeholders, it's where you get ambassadors. Have I spelled that right? <laughs> Let's not worry about that, but don't look at that. Um, get ambassador people that again it's the trust transfer thing if people aren't willing to buy from us we want them to become ambassadors so they essentially reinforce our brand to a much wider audience linkedin becomes the path of least resistance for us to become famous in our lifetimes finally go and check out your analytics these are your personal profile analytics the two most important numbers are who's viewed your profile because obviously you want to see, are you being viewed by the right people? And then what search appearances you have fallen into? Are people searching the right terms? And are you falling into the right searches for the right companies? So those two figures are really important. Check that on a weekly or a monthly basis. Make sure that you're uh, being viewed by the right people and indeed falling into the right search appearances. On the profile views element, it's another way to grow your network. If people are viewing your profile and, but they're not connecting to you, go and connect to them. Yeah, if they look like an ideal client, say, look, I, I know you viewed my profile. Hopefully you saw something you like. I'm not sure why you landed on my profile, but I'd like to connect with you. And then obviously start those two-way conversations, okay? Go and check out your SSI score, Social Selling Index. So linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI. It's four elements. It's basically four key things that tell you how well you're doing at LinkedIn. I mean, take it with a bit of a pinch of salt because... When I started paying for LinkedIn, I bought, you know, when I started paying for Sales Navigator, these numbers mysteriously went up. So I don't know. Um, but generally, have a look at these numbers. It will tell you, like, if you're doing well. The, the, an ideal number will be somewhere around 70 to 80, you know, in terms of, you know, out of 100. Anything over 80, great. You, you're in the wrong place. You don't need to watch this. And it's all about the compound effect. Incremental changes, 1% each day. Today, go and change your headline. Tomorrow, write a post introducing yourself. The next day after that, connect to five new people. The day after that, um, you know, rewrite your about section, etc. We're talking about a long-term content marketing strategy. You don't have to do everything in one day, but if you want to become one in a billion, it's these changes, incremental changes, that start bringing people to you and start creating inbound leads. And particularly when it comes to gamification, it's all about being better than you yesterday. Check your SSI score, check your analytics, um, check out what people around you are doing. Can you do better? Is there anything else you can do? It's all those incremental changes that ultimately create a long-term content marketing strategy. So of finding the right people, creating the right content, um, and then doing plenty of outbound engagement and having two-way conversations with those people that ultimately are either your brand ambassadors or your potential clients. <clears throat> So LinkedIn is part of the digital uh, marketing ecosystem. So think about your ideal clients, go and optimize your profile, particularly with your headline and, um, and then use keywords everywhere else. Chef's hat, you see where I put the space. Uh, curate the perfect audience and go and engage with them. Create uh, content that speaks to their pain points, not necessarily what you do for a living, but what their problem is and what they uh, needs fixing. And don't forget the analytics. So quick piece of homework, go and introduce yourself on LinkedIn. And you feel free to tag me in. Gus said, I should introduce myself. And this is what I do. This is who I am. Add a selfie, publish it, click the three dots, add it to your featured section. It will sit there forever. Until, of course, it's, you know, in six months time, you introduce yourself again. Okay. So just don't forget, life is short. And we, um, it's too short to spend all day, every day on LinkedIn posting content. All we need to do is these little incremental changes on a regular basis that grows our business that grows our audience that grows our brand ambassadors and get potential clients to and there are billions of stars and there's one billion stars on linkedin for example all we have to do is create the right things that stand out that make us stand out to the to our the audience that we've curated okay
that's me. Thank you. The, the, connect with me on LinkedIn. I don't have any lead magnets. I've got nothing to sell. Let's just connect. Tell me about yourself. You know, learn more about me. Let's have a conversation. You just never know where it's going. But thank you so much. I hope that was uh, that was useful. If you have any questions, just come and find me on LinkedIn. Shout anytime. More than happy to help. Okay. So thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you again soon.